Y'all sound good this morning. She's sneezing. You know, that could be dangerous now, sneezing in public. Amen. I tell you, you sneeze, boy, people run. <laughs> like bullets flying now. It's not even, that's worse than a gun now, people sneezing in public. All eyes, everybody's turning and looking at you like you got something wrong with you. But let me tell you, church, they're going to do that anyway. Because how many know the people of God are strange? The world's not strange. The Bible says that we're strange, that we're peculiar. People see us and don't understand how is it that we can have peace in the midst of storms. People don't understand that because they're not connected to the one who has the answer. That's why we're not uh, tossed to and fro. We're not running here and there for our answer. We know where our answer comes from. It comes from everything that Jesus Christ has done. And you have to have that firm faith in Christ and what he's already done and what he's already provided. I don't care what the devil is doing in Washington. <laughs> I don't care what's going on in the world right now. Amen. Amen. Because God will have the last answer. Amen. He'll have the final say. Can I get an amen? Amen. And so we're going to continue our message today. What's really going on? No, 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 that's not it. I don't know if y'all were here for that series, but when everything hit, me and Pastor came up with a title for a series, What's Really Going On? With the Kung Fu Virus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I won't get too messy with you guys tonight. But we're going to continue our message or this morning. And we're going to start on part, we're at part three. Does that sound right? Part three. Amen. Why is God allowing this part three? And we talked last Sunday a little bit about why is God allowing certain things into the Christian's life? Does God allow sickness to come into your life? Does he allow sin to come into your life? Does he allow destruction to come into the believer's life? There is an absolutely no to every one of those. He does not allow sickness. He doesn't allow destruction. Can I get an amen? amen? He doesn't allow any kind of disease to come in to somehow teach you a lesson so that you can better serve him. Are you with me, church? So let's go ahead and go back to, uh, if you're there with me, to 2 Corinthians. And we're going to continue our message of why God is allowing this. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 5. And we're going to start there. And before we go into verse 5, we know that the Apostle Paul is going through something. Amen? Amen. He's going through many trials. He's had this wonderful vision from heaven. He's had many revelations. And God is allowing something to be sent his way so that he's not lifted up in his spirit because of the abundance of revelations he's received from the father. Do you remember last Sunday I talked about him going into the third heavens? He was translated into the third heavens, whether he was in body or spirit. He says, I'm not really sure. But I believe that I was translated my entire body for a moment to see what exactly is going on in heaven. These things are so wonderful, the Apostle Paul said, that I'm hesitant. I'm reluctant to share with all of you this great spiritual experience I had. I want to share it with you. But it's been 14 years later that now I feel I am compelled to share certain things with the body of Christ so that you can understand where I'm coming from. I've had the abundance of visions and revelations, but I'm hesitant to share this information with you because I don't want you to see more in me be elevated above God's word than what you can see in God's word. Can I get an amen? And he goes on to say in verse five, are you with me? Amen. He says that experience, what I just shared with you, is worth boasting about. 
but I'm not going to do it. I will boast only about my weaknesses. If I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so because I would be telling the truth. But I want to do it. I won't do it because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message. Stop there. The Apostle Paul is so clothed with humility, so humble before the Father and before the body of Christ that he's telling them, I'm only going to share what the word of God says. And I'm not going to give you my special vision that God has given to me about heaven. Nowhere in the scriptures do you read the Apostle Paul explaining what he saw in heaven. Though the Apostle Paul saw something in heaven, we're not told what it was. Because the Apostle Paul wants to make sure that his life, his testimony, everything that God does in his life points to Jesus Christ and him crucified. His testimony wants to be surrounded by what God has to say and not by what he is experiencing in this earth. Now, your testimony can have some weight when it's needed. Are you hearing me, church? We overcome what? The devil by the blood of the lamb and by our testimony. And so there's times where you're going to have to mention your testimony to help someone along the way. But you can't build a ministry around a testimony. When you go to share Jesus Christ with someone, you share them how to get saved and you give them the cross and you show them how to receive Jesus Christ into their heart. Do you know Jesus? Have you received Jesus into your heart? Don't tell them all your woes and all your stories and how great you are and how God has used you. Point them to Christ and what he did for them on Calvary's cross and leave the results with God. Don't get your feelings hurt if they reject you. Amen. It's good for you to be rejected. I like to say it puts faith hairs on you. Develops your faith. Amen. Come on, church. He says in verse seven, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God. So to keep me from becoming what proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Now, I'm going to bring some uh, understanding to you. I'm going to bring some revelation to you. It's not loud. Is it too loud? Hello, can you? Is it cracking? Can I just bring a little bit up on my volume there? Are you all okay? Can you hear me? Am I coming in clear? Houston, am I coming in? Am I clear? Clear? Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Is that good, church? I want to explain something because as you see in the scripture, it says that God allowed something to come into the apostle's life. That he was given a spirit to torment him. To understand the mind of God, to understand that he's a good God, to understand all that what you've received out there. On social media, on the big, the big TV stations, the religious stations, how God is good. He's always good. That is very true, church. But there is a special blessing that comes along with serving God that he'll allow certain things into your life to perfect the saint, to perfect the Christian, because he's got to get some things out of you. And before you get to a place where you're lifted up in pride within yourself, some things will be assigned and permitted and allowed into your life for the buffeting. Amen. Amen. King James says that that whatever was given to him by Satan, allowed by God, was permitted to come into the apostle's life to keep him from being elevated beyond measure. And when he talks about being elevated beyond measure, the apostle Paul is talking about Satan himself being elevated with pride to the point where he thought he could dethrone God. Why was he lifted up in pride? He was the most beautiful angel In heaven that God created. He was on the worship team in heaven. (laughs) Amen. Why do you think the devil goes after the worship leaders to sell their gift to the world? He wants to pervert that gift. That's why music out there is so corrupt and perverted because the devil loves getting in there because he knows how to do it. 
something that says something about something that you get in there and you listen, you like the beat, but you don't think the words are ministering to you. They are ministering to you. You got to be careful what you listen to, church. And so the Apostle Paul is saying, I don't want to be lifted up in pride. But even that you don't have control over. God knows you better than you know yourself. Everything that comes into the Christian's life is either allowed or permitted. Can I say that again? Everything that comes into the this goes against every word of faith movement out there. What I'm saying right now. And I'm going to get into that a little bit further. It's a big movement that came in years back. The word of faith movement that came in where you can just faith and push and push back a lot of these things just by what you say. Don't get nervous on me now. <laughs> Everything that comes into the Christian's life is either allowed or permitted. Now, I want to explain that a little more because some of you are still, okay, I don't understand that quite, Pastor, how that works. I'm going to quote this from 1 Peter chapter, you don't have to go there, but this is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. Are you learning something already? Amen. This is Peter. We just, saw, we just heard from Apostle Paul, now we're going to hear from Peter. Are you with me, church? Of course, you get no credit. Of course, you get no credit for being patient if you are beaten for doing wrong or being in sin. But if you suffer for doing good and endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. Two scenarios right there, church, that God allows or permits into the Christian's life. I don't understand why I'm going through all this suffering. I'm going through all of these uh, tragedies the struggle the struggle's real that everything is happening right it's coming down on it will be known to the christian or to the child of god why it is in your life can i get an amen, amen. that means if you persist in your sin long enough guess what god will allow the hedge that's around you to come down but not right away the grace of god is there the grace of God is there because of what Jesus Christ has done. Grace and truth came by the way of Jesus because of what he did on the cross. So you and I have grace. That means space to get things together before that hedge comes down. The Holy Ghost is dealing with you. He's working with you. He's trying to get you to a place of serving God. And everything that's come in to the Christian's life is so that you can start serving him better. How many knows that's a blessing? The Bible says in Hebrews that if you're not chastised or disciplined, then you are a legitimate child. If you belong to God, guess what? You're going to be spanked every once in a while by God. That means if I keep going this way, God's going to pull out the rod and pull you back this way. It doesn't feel good. No discipline when it's happening is enjoyable. It's painful. But it yields something in the process. Something is being yielded in the Apostle Paul going through this situation. Amen. Amen. How many are in a trial right now? <laughs> How many are coming out of a trial? You should have been the one running around the church praising God. You're either in a trial, you're coming out of a trial, or you're heading into a trial. <laughs> many are the trials. Trials, trials. Many are the trials that we must face before entering into heaven. Wherefore, we greatly rejoice, church, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. Why? There's a season that comes to all of us. And if you're living right, I talked to it, uh, about it earlier that, that the hedge comes out. If you're in sin, you get no credit. If you're being beaten for that, I'm enduring it patiently. You get no credit for that. You brought that into your life. Amen. You got to confess, repent, sincerely get out of it and get back on the road with God. Amen. But if you're serving God, whoo, <laughs> the Apostle Paul didn't bring this because of any reason uh, of his own. He did not bring this into his life by his own hands. This is nothing he sold into. Now he's reaping some kind of this is God's special blessing sent to the Apostle Paul. From being lifted up in pride, he's going through manifold testings so that he is not lifted up. You are going through manifold testing for the perfecting of your faith. Amen. Are you hearing me, church? What's been allowed, what's been permitted to come into your life, if you're walking upright with the Lord and right standings with him, I'm doing what I got to do. Don't think it's strange when the fiery trials start coming against you. 
There is something divine happening when you're serving the Lord. Mm. What happened with Job? The whole design, when I spoke about it two Sundays ago, the reason Satan came and God allowed Satan to test Job was to test Job's sincerity. It was to test Job's faith. Those trials that come into your life are to test the genuineness and the sincerity of your faith in God. Even if you lose a car. Are you hearing me, church? You lose your job. No, 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 no. That's where you can open the door and not allow the test to have its purpose in you so that fruit comes forth afterwards. There is something wonderful that happens on the other side when you go through it. And you're here praying and pushing and pressing and saying, Lord, I rebuke it. I bind it. I, I, I come against it in the name of Jesus. You've spoken every scripture you can speak. And it seems like the mountain's not being removed. Amen. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. If you spend time in prayer, you know what I'm talking about. There's certain things that it just remains. And you have to continue to pray and seek the Lord. Keep knocking on the door. May, may not be removed. But the answer will be given to you Amen. of what's going on. Lord, what do I need to learn out of this trial that I'm going through? There's glory that comes to God when you go through that kind of trial and that test. Your faith is purified. Gold and silver in the fire is purified because everything that doesn't belong on the gold falls off when the heat turns up. Amen. When the trial is turned up in your business. When the trial is turned up in your marriage, when the trial is turned up in your relationships, amen, with your children, whatever the case may be, hallelujah, it's going to test your faith on how much you trust God in that place when you're being tried and tested. Am I going to give up? Am I going to shrink back? Am I going to walk away from all of this? No. Where else can we go? Who has the words of life except Jesus Christ? I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I, Pastor Jesse, am not going anywhere. I am not a hireling. I haven't been hired by man. I have been hired by God. <laughs> been called by God. Amen. That means that it doesn't matter what I do. I said, Lord, I may have gotten a little funny over here. A little crooked over here in the past, but you're going to know who I am when I get to heaven. <laughs> Woo! Come on now. You got to have that kind of relationship with your father. Even when you mess up, I'm coming to my father. Even when you miss it, I'm coming back to my father Hallelujah. because of what Christ has done. That's your right and that's your privilege because of the blood that was shed 2,000 years ago. You can come into the presence of God anytime you want. It doesn't matter how many times you've messed up. The Lord's just waiting. I'm here waiting. Just come properly. Come through the blood. You can't come on your merit, your self-righteousness, your ceremonies, your man-made religion. You come on the blood of Jesus and only the blood of Jesus. Yeah. On what he did. Woo! Opens the door wide. Because your faith is in the right thing. Mm. All right, let's keep going. Let's get to some teaching. That's a lot of preaching going on. So even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. It's as if the Apostle Paul, he's starting to sense something now. He's starting to understand the mind of God. How many knows we have to seek the mind of God, church? On whatever issue that you're going through, you must spend time in his presence seeking his face so that he can give you the understanding. And when you don't have all the understanding, like the Apostle Paul, you simply remain steadfast, immovable, unshakable, always abounding in the good work God has called you to do. It may just be show up to church. Here I come. I'm showing up even though I'm going through a trial right now. I'm showing up. And the Bible says when you show up, you honor one another. The Apostle Paul, throughout his letters, he says, have a love for each other, a fervent love. That means a, a hot love, a fiery kind of love for each other. 
that when you show up to the church, you see your brother or sister, you see the nose, you see the ear, you see the toe, you see the foot, you see the hand. You rejoice greatly and you honor each other by throwing out the red carpet like it's a celebration. Every time I see you, what does my face look like when you see Pastor Jesse, when he sees you coming to the church? It's like a little kid getting a birthday gift. Every time I see you, I celebrate you because that's what the Bible says. That is a love that's on fire for the body of Christ. Amen. You should have that toward each other. Always don't come in. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I move all out of the way. You guys are doing fine. I don't want to start getting come in with your attitude. How you doing? I'm here because they dragged me here. Oh, just, mer just, and you know, it's hard to touch someone's spirit like that. You can't get there. You can't get around them. You can't, they can't receive love because this is, this isn't good right here. When this is good here, everything around you is good. Amen. Your relationships are good. Even when someone out there uh, looks at you funny or says something strange or persecutes you or buffets you in some way, you're just still continually showing love. That's living in the spirit, church. Amen. Come on now. That's a good come on now. Come on now. Verse 8. Three different times. Everybody say three. Three. three different times. I begged the Lord. That means intense pleading to take it away. Three times, church. Three times the Apostle Paul, he came and he prayed. Have you prayed for a situation, church, more than once, more than twice, more than three times? And suddenly you find yourself, Lord, I've prayed against this thing. I've spoken faith against this thing. How many times do we go into spiritual warfare? Church, you got to... Use that term loosely. We are in a war, yes. But if you're always warring with the devil, you may have invited him in. And so that's why you're always warring. Where are the wars and the fights coming from? They come from within. The, the quarrels that are going on within. You're always angry. You're always fighting because of sin. You've allowed sin to come in. Look, church, the only way the devil can come in freely is if you're in sin. It's the only legal right he has to mess with the church because his legal claim has been destroyed because we have been purchased, redeemed by the blood of Jesus. We have a new owner now. We have different ownership. Are, are, are you hearing me, church? Someone else has purchased us and we belong to Christ and what he's done for us. He has set us free. So when we continue in sin, it opens the door. It gives the devil legal right because I'm stepping in. Because the door has been opened for him to come in. And the way you get him out isn't by spiritual warfare. When you're in that place, hear me, church. It's through repentance. It's through confessing your sin properly. You're warring with this thing and you've allowed him to come in. Okay, I'm not talking about deliverance. You need deliverance. You keep falling. There's something different. He said, willing, just let him in. Let's keep going. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Verse 9. Each time he said what? My grace is all you need. Hallelujah. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. There's the end result, church. Are you hearing me? There's the end. There, there is the end result of whatever it is you're going through. It is by the grace of God that I'm able to go through what I'm going through. Grace is sustaining power. Grace is enabling you to go through what you need to go through. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I humble myself before his throne that I may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Some of you need to find that grace to walk through what God has called you to walk through, whether it be on your job place. Come on, church. Persecution, hardship, famine, nakedness, sleeplessness, 
Whatever the situation might be, God's grace will sustain you to go through whatever situation you're going through. Amen. But we need to, what it, I humble, Lord, I'm just going through this situation. And, and I don't know what to do. There was a, a time in Pastor I, and I's life years back. This is early in our ministry. And my lumbar went out. And y'all have heard the story sometimes. And as my lumbar, lumbar went out, uh, such ex excruciating pain, racked with pain. And before I was saved, I had a strong addiction to pain medicine. And as I got saved, the Lord delivered me from that pain medicine. But then an accident came. And that pain is always associated in my mind that if I'm experiencing any pain, then I have to get something to numb it. How many knows most people live their lives like that? I don't want to experience any pain whatsoever. How do we numb our pain in Christianity? The Lord Jesus Christ. His presence is what gives us the peace we need when we're feeling empty. And I got injured again. I was working out, my lumbar went out. And it was a wreck. Degen how to say degenerated disc, all that stuff that goes along with lumbars. I mean, I barely have a lumbar back there. It's like bone on bone because of all the, the training I did growing up. I really just destroyed my lumbar, my back, my lower back. And so I went to the doctors. The doctor says, you're going to have to have surgery. You're going to have to all have all these things happen, and you're going to have to be on medicine. You're going to have to go to a pain management clinic. Does anybody know what I'm talking about here? Pain medicine is destroying America as well as Christians because it's legal doesn't mean God has approved of it. We would say alcohol. God's approved of alcohol because it's legal. No, 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 church. Marijuana is legal, so God has, must have allowed it because it's legal now because the government says it's legal. <laughs> and it came from the earth. Don't do that. Don't even say that. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Marijuana's from the earth. I've talked to so many Christians that are just loopy. Look. <laughs> go do what you want to do, but there's nothing in the Bible that says you can go smoke drugs. It says be of a what? A sober mind. <laughs> that's not going to leave you sober church <laughs> and the stonings that brother went through is not talking about the stonings of what we do out there in the world <laughs> he was stoned but with rocks he was not stoned with the devil's lettuce <laughs> God delivered me from that too that was an everyday habit for me for years I couldn't go a day uh, Let's see, three hours without smoking a joint. My mind was gone. And so here it is. God delivered me from that, delivered me from pain. So here comes an accident. And now the door has been opened because you have to take some form of pain medicine. And we get to a place where we get comfortable in our Christianity sometimes to where we think we can go back and do what we used to do in the world. Are you hearing me, church? Well, I'm so strong now. I'm so full. Of, it, 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 do not test the Lord thy God. Amen. Don't tempt God. Amen. That's what the Bible means. Don't test him to see how far you can stretch and where you can go and where you can be. And, and, and the thing is, is that I was on it. And then when I tried to come off it, I couldn't come off it because I stayed too long on it. Amen. And it progressed. And I, I bind. I, I rebuked. I got every scripture out. I looked up websites, print all the healing scriptures out. Have you all done that before? All the deliverance scriptures I pulled out and I spoke against this thing. I, the, the mountain to be that removed three times. But you're supposed to do that, church. Amen. That's what you're supposed to do. Amen? Amen. Are you hearing me, church? You do everything you know in your faith at that very moment when something strikes your home. You don't sit back and say, the grace of God is sufficient for me. Thank you, Lord. And then you go about your business. He had to seek for it. He had to beg God for it. He had to plead. We're not desperate enough anymore, church, to get into the presence of God and say, Lord, I need to be delivered. I need healing to come over my body. I'm tired of being like this. And you just let that thing sit on you and let it linger for a long time. And then it really gets in there. And what is it designed to do? Set up a stronghold up here. And then he starts lying to you. Amen. Devil's an accuser of the brother. And you're never going to be free. Those are lies. You're going to be divorced. You're going to be sick. Your business is going under. 
Those are lies from the pit of hell, church. Amen. And you have to get those things out. But as you're seeking the Lord, we were seeking God. I, I was rebuking, binding. I went to every rehab center, went to psychiatrists to help me get off. It was simply just drug addiction. Bottom line, there wasn't something wrong with me. I was some kind of, uh, something was out of, I was, there was an imbalance because it was the drugs that was imbalancing me. The pain medicine caused an imbalance in my brain, so I wasn't functioning of where I needed to be in God. So the doctor said to me, you're going to be on pain medicine for the rest of your life. You're going to have to be in a pain management clinic for the rest of your life. That means my ministry will be gone. See, that was the purpose of the devil trying to come in. He was trying to destroy what, he was, what God was calling me to do. Amen? Amen? That's his purpose to remove you from your influence in the Lord. Amen. That is the design be be behind the enemy. That's three, four months going by, and the medicine started getting stronger. Went from Vicodin to Narcos to Oxycodone. And the final one is Oxycontin, equivalent to heroin in a pill form, church. You hear people dying all the time, overdose, Oxycontin, and they're becoming more and more addicted. If it was not for the grace of God, I would not have been set free. But it didn't come easily. I had to plead. I had to beg. As the Apostle Paul said, I beg God to take it away. Did God somehow allow this thing? But no, he used what the enemy meant for evil for his glory. You got to know that whatever's trying to come in, God's going to use it for his glory. He's going to produce something in you, church. And I was in the office with pastor. And the doctor came in because... Guess what? The oxycodone wasn't doing it anymore. <laughs> but by then, the pain wasn't really there as much as I thought it was. There was an imagination going on in my own mind that the pain was there, but yet I was wanting more. I was wanting to get higher. And so the oxycodone, that's what leads to what? Overdose. Because the high is never high enough because it never satisfies you. That's what addiction is. It never leaves you full. It leaves you more empty. The only one that can fill you up is Christ. You'll leave out of here full and satisfied, ready to come back for another round. Amen. Can I get an amen, church? Give him some praise. Hallelujah. He's the only one that can fill you up and take away that emptiness in your life. Nothing else will do it in the world, church. Amen. We're sitting in that office. The doctor came in. Because the oxycodone wasn't working anymore, I had to go to the next step, which was oxycodone. The doctor comes in, the pain management clinic we're in. He says, Mr. Diaz, uh, you're still in pain. We're going to have to take you up to the next level, but you're going to have to sign some release forms. We're going to have to get your signature on some things. I said, why? We can't prescribe this kind of medicine to you until you uh, sign your name because most people don't make it back from this. That's what he told me. 90% of people that get on Oxycontin don't make it back. They'll be addicted for the rest of their lives. That's what he told us. And he says, I'll leave and I'll let you and your wife discuss it. Then I'm going to talk about grace. Oh, my gosh, when you find it. I was, my heart never left the Lord, but I was bound. And every time before I got up to that place, before that moment, when the doctor said that, I was seeking God with everything I had. I went through every rehab center. I went to every doctor, every psychologist, trying to get me free. And as I was sitting there, I looked at Pastor Delisa. I said, we're leaving. And we left the office, told the doctor, thank you. And we sat in our car, me and her, and I just began to weep. I said, I will never, ever touch a pain medicine again from here on out. It was as if God had just reached down at that moment. And his grace touched me and said, you're delivered, son. <laughs> because seeking and pleading, come on and give him the praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what it means when God begins to pour out his grace upon you, church. The apostle Paul, he sought for it. He didn't understand all the things that were happening. But from that moment we left out of that office, I never went back to that pain management clinic. I was gone. And that's not to condemn anyone here. 
I want you to hear me by the Holy Ghost. It has its place. Are you hearing me, church? Everything has its place and in moderation. But this very medicine is destroying people. It tried to destroy me and God set me free. Only the power of Christ can set you free. Man's devices will not set you free. Our weapons of warfare are not carnal. And I tried to address the situation in my carnal sense and it didn't work. It took the power of what Jesus Christ had done. Let's finish up. He says, so now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Verse 10. That's why you and I, church, can take pleasures in our weaknesses and in the insults and hardships, persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Did you all hear that, church? We're going to close there, but I want you to hear something. Through everything I've been preaching and teaching, why God is allowing this is to bring the child of God, to bring us, the children of God, to a place of weakness within our own will. That is the design of everything that comes into your life, church. We serve a good God. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Even though your conscience at this moment may be clean and clear, but it's God who will test you to see whether or not your faith is genuine. And that's okay, church. We have to welcome it. We have to rejoice in it. Count it all joy when I fall into various trials and temptations, knowing the trying of my faith is producing something in me. There's something going on in you, and it's a relationship with Christ that's deepening And I can sense that going on in this church right now. Some of your relationships are deepening with God. And you're understanding that weakness is, Lord, I can't do it in my will. I cannot do it in my intellect. I cannot do it in my resources. Nothing I've thrown at it has removed it. The Lord says, I'm waiting for you to come to me. I'm waiting for you to come to me. And God's just right there waiting like a big old father with his arms. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's waving you in. Come on. Come on. Come on in. Because he wants to give you something. He wants you to understand your weakness within you. He wants you to understand that your strength is in him. For when I'm weak, I, 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 I humble myself. I admit my dependence on the father. When I'm weak, then I start to become strong. Only then will you be strong in whatever situation you're going through. Whatever COVID, whatever coronavirus, whatever fears, whatever insecurities, whatever you're going through at this moment, he has the answer, church. In his presence is fullness of life, fullness of joy, fullness of power. He's just bidding you to come. Some of you, God has been calling you for a long time. He's been drawing you in for a long time. And you've been standing on the outside getting beat up. With everything. And he's saying, I'm waiting, my son. I'm waiting, my daughter. Come. I have something more for you. Hallelujah. Can I get some music? Everybody stand.